Welcome to the Unlock You with Dr. Shannon Crawford podcast. Life is difficult and trying to live it to the fullest while constantly second guessing yourself and feeling stopped by regret or painful experiences can take a toll on anyone. Do you want to get unlocked and see for yourself the beauty that life has to offer? Are you ready for aha moments and strategies to propel your business and family into a world of health? Then you've come to the right place. Join Dr. Shannon Crawford, a licensed psychologist, leadership consultant, conference speaker, and CEO of Crawford Clinics located in Dallas, Texas, as she shares her expertise from her life's commitment to helping you, the CEO, therapy client, parent, and teacher alike, identify and remove the unconscious blocks hindering you from thriving in your potential. We will also have amazing guests with incredible stories, rich knowledge, and keys to help you get unlocked today. Let's get started. Many of us accidentally sabotage our best opportunities and closest relationships because of black or white thinking. The polarizing of putting people and things in all good or all bad is actually an egocentric stage of development. That just means we're really young and the part of my brain that's making the decision of, do I stay in this relationship? Do I not? Is this person good or bad? Is this opportunity or job or position all good or all bad? Most of life is actually quite mixed. It's a lot of spectrum of gray and in the middle and a pros and cons of, is this the right timing, the right season? Do I need to extend grace and mercy or do I need to have firmer boundaries? Everything is a compilation of a kaleidoscope of life. And if your brain is still bucketing things as all good and all bad, just know that's a younger stage of development. That part of your brain is still operating automatically on a younger heuristic or mental shortcut. It's not good or bad. It's just information. So now with that information, I'm equipped to go, okay, the reason I'm getting stuck and having a hard time making a decision, I'm getting an analysis paralysis because I am operating at a younger stage of development that is now antiquated and outdated to the skill set I need to make more of a nuanced adult decision approaching this current relationship, opportunity, career, position, wherever you might be. So what we need to do is actually forge ahead into clarity. I reject the belief that I need to defend and protect myself. And that's where the super ego, that perfectionistic looking for the flaws in yourself and in others, where that part is on extra overdrive. And on the other side, the playful, fun, whimsical, I just want to do the things that part can also be on overdrive. And what that looks like is, yeah, I want to start this business. This is going to be so great. And I'm going to partner with this person and I'm going to take out this business loan. It's all going to work out so great. I'm going to marry this person in a couple of weeks. Blah. So that feels really fun. And it feeds a part of us that loves forward movement. But on the other side, I don't have all of my buy-in because I didn't actually take the time to do an internal board meeting and make sure all of my soul is ready, equipped, and that I'm actually in a season to move forward at the pace that my soul would like to. Then the soul goes, wait a second, put the brakes on. Wait, maybe I can't trust this person. Maybe this opportunity isn't good. Maybe this bank or this loan or these terms, maybe it's not okay. And so what you'll find is you're like a teeter totter and it creates self-sabotage. And before we know it, our soul is just vacillating and overthinking and ruminating because you have different committee members inside running the show with different agendas. The reason we do an internal board meeting is so your soul can settle down, be still, and you can hear all the parts of you and then cause your soul to step back and then make a decisive, clear, and organized decision from your spirit, man. You are bright and intelligent and capable. There is a great call on your life. There is more to what is in you than you could ever fathom. And it's not just for you. It's to actually unlock others. We unlock you on this channel so that you can be a healthy sphere of influence, so that you can be a healthy steward of the influence that you've been entrusted with. 
You're not just here for your own self and building up your own little kingdom. You're here because there are people who are asking questions, who are crying out, who need help, who are in a position financially, emotionally, relationally, spiritually in a stuck place. And you are part of advocating for them, part of giving light and illumination of truth. When that gets unlocked in you, you help unlock others. The problem is if you run ahead because your soul is like, oh yeah, this is my vision. Run, 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 run. And you're not actually pacing with your spirit, man. You have run into presumption. And when we move in presumption on accident, we're operating out of our self pace. And our pace is always far faster and far slower than the pace of what would be health. Maturity and growth sometimes has growing pains where things happen really fast and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't feel equipped and ready for this. And sometimes growth is obnoxiously slow. But if you're not doing internal board meetings, you don't know how to be still, go slow, and then get in the right rhythm and cadence of, okay, put your name out there. Okay, get your DBA. Okay, reach out, start doing the marketing here, spend money here. If not, the soul is moving at light speed and or breaking at times where you should be advancing and you won't have that wisdom and discernment and you'll feel like you're a volleyball back and forth and this internal struggle where you're a house divided against itself. We don't want internal sabotage to steal, kill, and destroy from the vision and the influence and the joy that you're intended to release. We want you to learn. Okay, I have many parts of self. My soul is really animated and excited and wants to help. It also wants to protect me from being deceived and tricked and people doing things, right? And so if you know that about yourself, you can internally say, hey, me that wants to run ahead, wants to see progress. Many of us have been kind of in Groundhog Day. We've been in the wilderness just waiting these long seasons where it feels like life's never going to change. And then opportunities start opening and we can run into presumption. And or we're so used to it going slow that we put the brakes on feeling disqualified. Who am I? And we slow and stalemate the progress that is supposed to be happening right now. But you won't know that if you're only making the decisions based on, yeah, I'm ready. No, I'm not ready. You're not actually the best estimator of your qualification nor of your readiness. What in reality would be helpful is to internally assess what is my gut saying? What is that deeper resonance, the true you? What is your spirit saying when it comes alive? Some call it your baby leap or a treasure hunt where you get another clue and another approximation of something you're getting close to. May this be a time that you write those clues like a treasure hunt instead of just automatically running in presumption, assuming it's that thing. And or putting the brakes on things going, oh, maybe I can't trust this person. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do this job. And maybe I shouldn't make the move. Those are all very reactive, neither of which are paced and rhythmic and healthy. There is a peace that transcends all understanding that guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And there is noise and excitement and emotion, but it's not going to come through your emotion. It's not going to come through your intellect and your understanding. It's actually going to come through this deeper resonance of just knowing. And now the hard thing is most of the time we're like, but I don't just know. I have to make a decision and there's a timeline. One, ask yourself, is this a real timeline or am I allowing the tyranny of the urgent or someone else's expectation and demand to rule my pace? Two, Am I putting myself in a position where I've created an expectation that I should know or that I think everyone else's lives are here, so I should just make a decision? I mean, how many people have just taken a job or just married someone or just jumped into a ministry position because they thought that's where they should be and they felt behind or like others are looking at them or saying things and that expectation is blinding you from the peace of God, the cadence of knowing this is the right rhythm and go in this direction.
The third thing is also being aware. Are you putting the brakes on things because of fear, fear of inadequacy, fear of failure, fear of getting to a place and not being able to withstand it, which is really imposter syndrome. There's so many ways that our noisy, chatty soul is hindering us from hearing from our spirit, man. You are bright and you are vibrant, but if you stay at a busy pace of life, you will miss brilliant opportunities to hear from your spirit, to grow, to be strengthened and alive for all the adventures ahead. So we want to get out of black and white thinking. When you catch yourself going, it's either this or this, this person is all good or all bad. I either hate or love them. <laughs> then you know your brain is still running and an older mode of operating. And in that black and white thinking, life will always be confusing and conflictual. But if you can step back and now cause the run ahead, trust, and the put the brakes, suspicious, calculated part of you, if you can visualize those two parts of you coming together, rejecting the belief that I need to seize every opportunity like an orphan and I need to make it happen. I need to run ahead. I can't miss out, you know, FOMO of fear of messing out. And on the other side, I also need to repent of ways that I have tried to protect myself. I've tried to block opportunities and, and be wary and suspicious of things instead of the wisdom and the discernment of the Lord and truly trusting he loves you and he wants to protect you. When you step in to protect yourself with that all good, all bad, you've actually taken his position. But when you can forgive Look at the person, look at the situation and say, hey, they're not all good and they're not all bad. There may be some really good things to this person or this event or this career or position. And there may be some things that are not for right now. Maybe this person has been in your life and they've been in your inner, inner circle. And you're starting to see some bitterness or uh, cutting remarks or some things that you're like, that's not very healthy. Maybe it's not all good or all bad. Maybe I don't feel indebted that I owe them something because of a past season, but I also don't need to cast them out in an uh, emotional sever. What does it look like to just step out with a little bit more boundary internally of saying, okay, they're not in this season able to steward the inner, inner parts of my heart, but maybe I can just put them in that outer circle. They're still in my life. I still value them, but I'm recognizing some things that are not very healthy. And so we're just going to put them a step out. I'm going to start looking at things a little more objectively that I can love them. I can forgive them. I don't have bad feelings, but I recognize if they're doing that with other people, odds are good. That's a character issue. And they will probably do it with you. So now you just have a little bit more information. You can love them, you can honor them, and you can have an internal balance of saying, you know what, they're not going to have access to the deeper treasures of my heart. If it's in a marriage, maybe there are seasons where you've been really close and you're not necessarily needing to like move them in the other bedroom. But just in your heart of hearts, no, maybe they've allowed some bitterness, some critical spirit type things. And so just be careful. Just in your imagination, you're putting armor, you're putting a, a veil and asking the Lord to protect your heart that any words that may be said, they're not for you and you don't take them in. You start recognizing fruit in people's life. They're not an all good or an all bad. You just know season by season. You slow down and you start recognizing even our closest friends sometimes can be the ones that the enemy's trying to use to hurt you. They're not bad people, but they may have some unconscious doors open that they're not aware of. And before they know it, words are coming out of their mouth that they may not even believe about you. Now, that doesn't mean they're not culpable and they're not responsible, but it does mean that is not probably their heart for you. But the enemy is looking in a strategy. How can he get someone close to you to be the one that wounds you? I was with a group of friends one night and these are like the deep, deep inner sister, inner circle. And one of my friends said comments about me that I was like, oh, wow, that was really hurtful. Um, and I was actually feeling really proud of myself that I had chosen not to take offense for something that I could have. And for them to say something literally outlandish that I was like, oh my gosh, that's 
opposite of everything of who I am. And so when they kept talking, I started to hear because internally, you know, not all good, not all bad. I said, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to hear this? And I started to hear this is a precious dear friend. And they have some unresolved wounds to one of their parents. And they were starting to perceive me through that lens. And in that time, that was still their reality. They weren't saying, and I realize that's not you. They were saying, and this is reality. This is who you are, Shannon. The good thing is because of not going black and white and thinking she's all good or she's all bad, not just taking feedback in, I was able to lovingly look at her and hold information that I knew it wasn't really about me. So I could be gracious and lovely and corrective for anything that I had done that had triggered that reaction. Now, at the end of the night, that friend did not take responsibility for the way that they were kind of Uh, projecting some things and uh, taking real events and then it getting skewed from a heart that wouldn't be mine. And so it just let me know, I love this person. I know their heart is good toward me, but I may need to just move them out a little bit, not all the way, but just for a season until that area in their life is a little bit more closed and healed that that I'm not going to let just anybody have conversations and tell me who I am and what I'm about when I know that that's not who I am. And I want you to think in your own life. We don't want to character assassinate. We don't want to emotional sever all of our relationships, but we also don't want to give free access to people or situations or events that just may not be intentional and good and investing into who we are. Now there is feedback and we want to be people who are open to feedback, but when it's so negative and there's not really a balance of like, Hey, I know it's not your heart, but you may be doing this and maybe a blind spot, blah, blah. If it's not coming in that way and it's accusation, it's targeted and it's direct, then you may start to wonder, Holy spirit, what, how do you want me to hear this? How do you want me to hold this information? And it's always a good idea to hold it on the outside of you, that this is not really who you are. You're a gem and identity is that you are good. And you and I, me included, we have growth opportunities. So when you hear feedback, be careful also not to go all good, all bad. You may feel good about yourself until you get feedback and then it's like, I'm all bad. I work with so many clients that are feeling okay at work and then they get their review and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm all bad. I'm a failure. I should not go to work on Monday, you know, instead of saying, okay, I'm not all good and I'm not all bad. I am good and I'm working hard and here's some opportunities as an investment of what I can be working on to continue my growth journey. That is balanced. That's a mature line of reasoning. And when you're in that space, you're picturing the super ego that wants to be perfect and never mess up. And the id that just wants pleasure and doesn't want to have hard conversations and just wants to make it all positive and shiny and indulging. Those parts of you learn how to steward hard moments together. And when you do, now your soul can step back It can be at peace and not take control. And you can truly ask from the inside, your spirit man coming forward and saying, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to hear this? What is the intel that you want to give and deliver through this? Is it literal feedback that I can be aware of? Or is it a prayer point that now I can start interceding for this friend, boss, manager, employee, spouse, child? or neighbor, or whatever, like, what is the intel? What is the heart that you want me to have? Because odds are good. It's the opposite of what the situation would naturally elicit out of us. We are naturally one of two responses, right? We are going to either cower down and take it and just take everything in, which is not wise. We're actually told guard your heart above all else. It is the wellspring of life. So you're actually told to guard your heart. That's why we talk about boundaries so much, but on the other side, just attacking or running or shutting it down or just glossing it over and not listening to anything could also be prohibiting your ability to be receptive to feedback. We want to learn how to hold things on the outside of us and not ask our soul. 
not based on our emotion or thought and our feeling. The enemy is a sleazy attorney who will use evidence and fill your mind to go, oh my gosh, that other person said that. Or that 12 years ago, that college roommate said, blah, blah, blah. You know, he'll build this sleazy case against you. If it's all good and all bad, you know, it's not healthy. Whether it's all good or all bad about someone else, about a situation or about you, be very cognizant that it's probably from the soul realm and not actual intel from the spirit. Because when I've had people say and do things that um, honestly, I, it wasn't the best, right? But I can hold that with such humility and love and compassion, knowing this is really happening because they're wounded or they're feeling jealous or insecure, or there's something that God's working on in their life. So now out of love, I can intercede with compassion rather than taking it personal, getting offended and ruining a relationship. Because now if I operate in the way that they're treating me and I respond in that, I just created a self-fulfilling prophecy. I proved what the enemy was telling them about me was actually true. Think in your own life, do a 360, write down your most pivotal, important relationships and the kind of feedback you're getting. Is it life-giving? Is it critical and harsh or in more realistic? Is it pretty balanced? Kind of some good, some bad. And now start recognizing how are those people treating you? What are the dynamics? How are they treating others and talking about others? Are they betraying other people's confidence? Do they share things out of turn that you're like, I don't know that I should be hearing this. Then be aware they're probably going to do that to you as well. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means they probably shouldn't be given information that is treasured and cherished to your heart. They're not ready to steward that. We can love people through that, but we also know I am called to steward my inner world. And when things are too black and white, too polarizing, that's a quick clue that we're in that cognitive bias. We're in an older, uh, younger stage of development rather. And in that place, we're easily duped into thinking through our soul and making rash decisions of oh, needy, trying to fix, trying to get them to like us again, prove ourselves that we're not like what you just said or what you heard about us or get out of my life, emotional sever. I didn't want you in my life anyway. But if you can hold that middle space, stay curious, invite your soul to step back. I'm safe. Even if this person walks away with a skewed view of me, you can still love them. It doesn't mean they get the inner parts of my heart, right? It means I can still love them for who they are and where they are in their journey. And they're just giving me information of how close that I can allow them to get versus in my outer circle and my friend group and hanging out, but not necessarily bringing them close. There's information people are giving us if we have eyes to see and ears to hear and understand. May you develop a more balanced approach to yourself, to your relationships, and to career and vocation and ministry opportunities, realizing things are not black and white. They're not polarized. Most of the time, life is pretty in the gray, kind of mixed. And then in a season, you can let some people get closer and then you can move some out, but it's very fluid. It's very organic. It doesn't have to be mean and harsh unless, I mean, it's something egregious, but I'm just talking about your everyday normal stuff. And that'll help your soul calm down so you can lead and make the decision from your spirit or your true self, your gut, that you know what is healthy and how close to let people and how close not to let people, what to step into and at what pace to step into it. I am so honored to be on this journey with you. I believe in you. And Crawford Clinics is here for therapy, couples counseling, family therapy, and leadership coaching, which is my personal passion. Thanks guys. And I hope you enjoy this season of dreaming and advancing with intentionality.